Welcome to Worship at St. Stephen. We are so blessed to have you with us. I'm Jesse Innes, the Associate Pastor, and I just wanted to say a special welcome to all of you that are joining us for worship, especially if you're joining us for the first time. Now, we would love for you to register your attendance with us. Let us know that you're worshiping with us, and if you would, let us know how we could pray with you, how we could be a part of your community. We would truly be blessed by that. Now, without further delay, here's today's message. Good morning, my name is Greg Clark. Please remain standing in honor and reverence for the reading of the scripture. Today's reading is from the book of Genesis. Sarai mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. And he said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress Sarai, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, you are now pregnant and you will give birth to a son. You shall name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard of your misery. So she named the Lord who spoke to her, You are Elroy, you are the God who sees me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, as Jesse mentioned, today is the first Sunday of Advent. There's four Sundays between now and Christmas, and we mark them. We light a candle, we, you know, we prepare our hearts and our souls and our minds for the coming of the Christ child. And so this year, I thought that we would look at, in preparation for that, at God's messengers. Now, we commonly refer to these messengers that we find in the scriptures as what? Angels, exactly. Uh, the word angel comes from the Greek word angelos, which means actually, though, messenger. So that's why we're calling it messengers. And we're going to look at these scriptures that teach us something about who these messengers are, what they're all about. But most importantly, what do they tell us about God? Now, before we sort of get into that and sort of lay a foundation today, I wanted, you, I wanted to start with an angel story. So on Saturday, a group of, uh, uh, of four guys, they were in the country club and they were in the locker room after playing their round of golf. Uh, on that, that day and while they're in there uh, a cell phone goes off and so a man he goes over and he he picks up the cell phone answers the call puts it on speaker and says hello and the person on the other end of the cell says hey honey are you still at the country club and he says yeah I'm, I'm, I'm still here and she says well okay great well you know I'm out here at South Park and and I just came across this a, a, a beautiful leather jacket. Now it's a little expensive. It's I think it's uh, about two thousand dollars because, well, you know, she was in Neiman Marcus. So what do you expect, <laughs> All right? And uh, uh, you know, but I just love it. Do you do you think do you think I could get that? And the man said, Well, you know, if you really love it, yeah, okay, go for it. She said, oh, thanks, honey. Uh, oh, and, and by the way, on my way over, I, you know, I, I went by the Lexus dealership. You know, we've been looking at those cars, and they got the exact one I, I, we've been looking at in the color that I love. What do you think? Do you think we should get it? And the man said, well, well, you know, if they got the one that you, 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 in, in your color, yeah, 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 you, you should get it. Oh, honey, I love you so much. You're an angel. Oh, one more thing. One more thing, though. Uh, you know that house that we looked at last year? <laughs> well, I just saw that it has gone down in price. And, you know, and this is our dream house. Do you think, you know, we should make an offer on this? What do you think? And again, the man says, well, you know, if you love the house, yeah, maybe we should, yeah, let's put an offer on it. And then again, she says, oh, you are the best. I love you so much. You are an angel. You are a living and breathing angel. I love you. And with that, that was the end of the golf. Now, the guys in the locker room overhearing this, they start to give this gentleman a, a hard time. 
Oh, 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 you really are amazing. You know, you are an angel, a living and breathing angel. And the man replied, well, I don't know about that, but I sure would like to know whose cell phone this is. <laughs> now that might be one type of angel, okay? But that is not what we're going to be talking about, okay? <laughs> that is not the kind of angels we are going to be talking about. But I do want us to understand some things about these messengers, right? And one is that we need to understand that they were created by God for a purpose, all right? So they were created by God. They're not deities. They're not lesser deities. They were created by, these are specifically created creatures, if you want to call them, whatever, by God to serve God to work on behalf of God, to speak, to speak to us on God's behalf. All right, so that's important for us to understand. Now, a lot of times when we think of messengers or angels uh, and the way uh, many times they are portrayed, they look like what? They got what? Exactly, wings. Yeah, of course, every angel has wings, right? Yeah, well, that's not what the scriptures tell us. So if I'm going to, you know, if we're going to understand what these messengers are all about, that's, that's, our, that's, you know, that's our source book, okay? The scriptures. And the scriptures don't tell us anything about these messengers having angels outside of, because I know somebody will remind me. I've already been reminded when I was sharing this at home. I'll give my family a little preview, and they're like, well, you know, they, no, no, they, they, they're, they're pretty good. Uh, they said, well, you know, there's, there's the cherubim and seraphim. And exactly, and they are described as these heavenly beings who are around or surround the throne of God. And they are described as having wings. All right, but those are some specific things, cherubim and seraphim. All the other messengers are angels, okay, that are talked about in the scriptures. They're never described as having wings. In fact, most of the time when we read about them and they come into human contact, most folks don't even recognize them as angels or messengers. In fact, again, the word angel comes from the Greek word angelos, which means messenger. The, the Hebrew word in the Old Testament for, the, for it is this word malark. Now, I know I'm out of order a little bit, but you have to find it. There you go. Uh, well, but they both mean the same thing. They both mean messenger. So anytime in the scriptures we find angelos or malark, it's talking about these messengers or angels. But what's also interesting about this is that it never distinguishes between whether it is a earthly messenger or a heavenly messenger because the same word is used to describe both. So in the scriptures, when it says angelos or malark, it's talking about messengers, but it doesn't say, oh, this is an earthly one and this is a, this is a heavenly one. It just tells us that they're a messenger, that they were created by God, that they don't have wings. But they also, we also need to understand that they, they're they not deceased humans. And I know some of y'all are already like, oh, you're a heretic, I know. <laughs> Again, you gotta read the scriptures, okay? Angels are created by God specifically. They are not people who have died and gone to heaven and after doing enough good things, got their wings, okay? That's not how it works. When we die and go to heaven, we become part of what we call the communion of saints. All the faithful followers of Christ who went before us, presently, in the future, we're joining the communion of saints. We don't become angels. Now, do I believe that there are moments when our loved ones, you know, they, who've gone before us, uh, they connect with us in some way or that we sense their presence? And I would say, yes, but that doesn't mean that they're angels, okay? They're part of the communion of saints. And then finally, and, and we have to remind ourselves this, that uh, these messengers, these angels, they're not the focus of our faith. They're not meant to be the focus of our faith. We're not to worship them, okay? They're not meant to be prayed to. What do they do? Well, they point us, really, these messengers, they point us back to God. They tell us something about who God is. So they're created for a specific purpose. They don't have wings. Uh, 
they're not deceased humans. They're not to be the focus of our faith. They don't, they don't look like Raphael's cherubs. You remember that picture? I think I got a picture of that, of Raphael's cherubs. You know that, there you go. We've seen that before. All right, that's not what the scriptures say they are. Uh, they're also not like uh, the 1996 film, Michael, starring John Travolta. Remember that? Did anybody see that film? That was an interesting portrayal of an angel, right? <laughs> okay, nope, they're not like him. Uh, they're also uh, not like angel second class Clarence Oddbottom, okay? From It's a Wonderful Life, which has been on uh, recently. We looked at last year if you're a part of that. Remember, anytime a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. Well, yeah, that's all nice and warm and fuzzy in a, in, in, you know, in a film, but that's not what we find in the scriptures there. So what do the scriptures tell us about these messengers? Well, I think you go again. One of my favorite stories is a story I think probably many of us have heard about three young Jewish men who are in exile in Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar, right? He creates this giant statue of himself. All right, it's a golden idol. And the people are told anytime the city band plays, you're to pause and you bow down and worship this picture of me, said Nebuchadnezzar, this idol of myself, this sculpture of, uh, of myself. Pay homage to the golden image of Nebuchadnezzar. But these three young men say, no, nah, that's not what we're going to do. All right, that's not us. All right, we're not going to bow down to this because we worship the one true God. We're not going to worship any idols. Well, Nebuchadnezzar gets word of this. He's not too pleased about it, all right? And so what does he do? You know the story? He begins to heat up this fiery furnace. And then he takes those three young men by the names of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Exactly. And he throws, he said, now, are you going to bow down? And they said, no, nope, that's not us. We're not going to bow down. It's like, all right, well, guess what? This is what's waiting you. And they're like, well, God's with us. And if he doesn't even say this, we're still not, we're still not going to bow down. And so in the fiery furnace, they go. And as Nebuchadnezzar looks on, he throws in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he looks, there's one, there's two, there's three, and then there's a fourth. It's like, what is going on? And that they're just walking around like, oh, this is nice. This is nice. Ooh. They're not being burned up. They're not being consumed by the fire. And so what does Nebuchadnezzar do? He pulls them out. And he says, well, there was an angel of the Lord that was there. And I didn't allow the flames to consume these men. Now you find that story in the book of Daniel and later on in the book of Daniel Daniel you know Daniel who's this uh, another faithful Jewish young man what happens to him he's thrown into what the lion's den and the scriptures again tell us that an angel of the Lord was there in the lion's den and closed the mouth of this lion of this lion so it would not devour Daniel so these two stories what do they tell us about uh, about these messengers about these angels well, I think one thing, it, it, you know, what are they to do to point us back to God? And so I think one thing they do is they remind us that when we find ourselves in dire circumstances, God has a tendency to show up. When they feel hopeless or helpless, God has a tendency to show up. Remember Elijah, the prophet Elijah? Elijah says some pretty harsh things to uh, King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. And then in this major battle with these prophets of Baal, all right, uh, he wipes a bunch of them out. Well, these are the prophets of Queen Jezebel. So she's not happy that he's just wiped out all these, all these pagan Baal prophet people. And she says, as surely I, as I live, Elijah's gonna die. Well, Elijah catches word. And he runs, okay? He flees, goes down to the wilderness. He's depressed, he's despondent, and he prays to God, God, please just take me out of here. I don't want to live anymore, which I find very, uh, very ironic. I mean, here's one of what we would call one of the saints of God praying to die, basically. And Moses did the same thing uh, as well. 
I mean, even the great saints of God struggled. All right, we need to remember that. But this is where Elijah is. And this is what we read in 1 Kings 19. It says, Elijah was terrified, all right, because, you know, Queen Jezebel wants him dead. So he got up and he ran for his life. He finally sat down under a solitary broom brush. He longed for his own death. It's more than enough, Lord, take my life because I'm no better than my ancestors. And he lay down and slept under the solitary broom brush. Then suddenly a messenger, and so this is Hebrew, so it's Malak in Greek, Angelos. An angel tapped him and said to him, get up, eat something. Elijah opened his eyes and saw flatbread baked on glowing coals and a jar of water right by his head. He ate and drank, and then he went back to sleep. The Lord's messenger returned a second time and tapped him. Get up, the messenger said. Eat something, because you have a difficult road ahead of you. So here's Elijah. He feels discouraged. He's, he's down and out. He feels helpless and hopeless. And what does the angel of the Lord do? What does this messenger do? Well, he prepares a meal for him, doesn't he? And he wakes him up and tells him, hey, come on, you need, you need to eat. And he wakes him up again and says, hey, you need, you know, you need to, you need this nourishment because you got a lot of difficult road ahead of you. Now, does this angel of the Lord, this messenger, do anything miraculous here? No. Oh. And we need to remember, many times the, these messengers of God, they don't always come and do something miraculous. They don't always come and solve all the problems. Many times they come and they simply encourage. Now, again, in the scriptures, this is, you just find the word mark, so we don't know if it's uh, an earthly angel or a heavenly angel here with uh, Elijah. All right, it doesn't, we don't know. Because when you think about it, when you think about what this angel of the Lord does is what you and I would do for somebody, wouldn't we? Doesn't this happen? When a friend is down or depressed, what happens? Many times, friends come over and they bring food, don't they? And if the person is not eating, what do they do? Hey, you need to eat. They encourage them. They do the very thing that the messenger of the Lord did here with Elijah. I mean, to me, it doesn't really matter if Elijah's messenger was earthly or heavenly. Because again, he's painting a picture of us, uh, of who God is, what God does. And that is that God is concerned for us when we're walking through really difficult times. And that message can come from a heavenly messenger or an earthly one. It doesn't matter, does it? There was Hagar that Greg read about. Hagar was an, an Egyptian slave girl, all right? And we find her story in Genesis 16, then a bit more in Genesis ch chapter 21. Hagar was Sarai's, or later whose names changed, become Sarah. There's Abraham and Sarah. But before they were Abraham and Sarah, they were Abram and Sarai. Got it? Good. Now, if you recall, Abram and Sarai, they lived their entire lives. They were obedient to God. And God said, hey, your descendants are going to be as numerous as the stars. But the thing was, they didn't have any children yet. And so as each year went by, there was no children and so Sarah, Sarah takes it upon herself. She says, well, I got an idea. I'll have Abram, Abraham, get with my slave girl, Hagar, and they can have a baby together. And then I'll raise this child as my own. Now, this is a terrible deal, deal for Hagar. Think about it, okay? I mean, she's a slave. She doesn't have a choice. The whole thing is just sad and broken and painful. But it gets worse. Abraham and Hagar, they, they conceive and you think that Sarah, Sarah would be uh, overjoyed, but no, in fact, she becomes even more bitter and resentment because Hagar has been able to have a child and she hasn't yet. So this is what she does. As we heard, Sarah mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. And the angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert and said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? Well, I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous, numerous to count. 
The angel of the Lord also said to her, You are now pregnant, and you will give birth to a son, and you shall name him Ishmael. For the Lord has heard your misery. So she named the Lord who spoke to her, You are El Roy. You are the God who sees me. Now, Hagar, she's an insignificant girl. She's an Egyptian uh, slave girl. She's not related uh, to Abraham in any way, and yet God sees her. God has compassion for her. God sends an angel, a messenger to her. And again, there's nothing really miraculous that this angel of the Lord does. I mean, the angel basically says, hey, God sees you. God cares about you, you and your child. And no matter what Sarah does, I'm going to bless you and your child. And so what again, what does she call? What does Hagar call God? Elroy the God who sees the God who sees your pain the God who sees your suffering the God that sees you in the midst of uh, the darkness the God who saw Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego uh, the the God who was with Daniel in in the lion's den who saw Elijah when he wanted to die in the wilderness this is who God is these messengers again pointing us back to God this God who sees us who has compassion on us, knows us, loves us, walks with us. Now again, did the angel make everything okay for Hagar? No, the angel said, go back. And so she does. And if you read on in Genesis chapter one, Sarah's anger and resentment is still present until finally Sarah sends Hagar and the child away. But again, God sees her and has compassion on her. And he sends his angel to her once more. And the angel, again, doesn't do anything miraculous. The angel just says, hey, here's some water over here. I know you're thirsty. There's some water over here. God just shows up. And reminds her that he is with her and with her son. Again, these messengers, these angels, they tell us something about God. He walks with the Jesus doesn't leave us alone depressed who encourages us but they also give us a glimpse as to how we are to treat one another as well because angels can be heavenly but they can be earthly as well in preparation I'm reading stories of people's experiences with angels and I came across this one uh, this week story of a, a young woman she was uh, in accident or something didn't specify, but uh, she was in she was in the IC unit of a hosp- of the hospital there. Her family lived out of town, so there was she didn't have any family uh, there yet. And her aunt had heard about it as well, and and she was just really really worried for her niece. You know, and was just really scared. I mean, here's here's my my niece who's uh, in the ICU, and and she's all alone. And so she said, she said, I knew that people had sometimes seen angels at times of physical peril, and so that became my prayer. Lord, please send an angel to her. Well, later she saw her niece after she had uh, recovered and, and she asked, her aunt asked her, hey, did you happen to have an angel visit you while you were in the ICU? And the young woman said, well, I don't remember an angel, but I do remember a woman named Betty who came and spent the entire uh, night sitting with me in the ICU not long after I had gotten there. Every time I awoke, I looked and, and, and there she was. And I'm so glad she was because she gave me this sense of peace. And so the next day, when my day nurse came in, I, I, I asked her, I said, hey, would you, I said to her, would you, would you tell Betty, thank you for sitting with me uh, last night? And she said, the nurse just looked at me and said, we don't have anyone on this floor who works day or night named Betty. And that was the Betty who sat with this young woman all night there in the ICU room. Was she a heavenly being? Huh? Was she a heavenly angel and an earthly angel? Was she a stranger who just happened to walk by and thought, you know what? I'm just going to sit with this young woman. 
or was she visited by a heavenly angel? Well, it doesn't really matter to me which one it was because all I know is that there was a Betty, okay, sitting in a room with a young woman and I see you and he, he or she or she Betty gave her comfort and peace and reminded her that God was with her you know I started um, the sermon with a story about an angel on a cell phone right <laughs> again I don't think that's how God works but <laughs> it, did, it did remind me of something so uh, last Sunday uh, the encounter service at 11 o'clock now I don't typically have my phone with me in worship at 9 o'clock now I will take it with me over to 11 a.m. because I like to I like to use the QR code which you're always invited to do to sign in and do that so I'll do it over at the 11 a.m. service I'll get my phone out and I'll, I'll uh, QR and I'll say that I'm here in case people forgot uh, and so I took my phone out and I did it and I saw that I had a text now normally again I, you know, I, I don't really try, try not to pay attention to that stuff I'm there in worship but I, I QR and I was like hey let me let me let me see who this is and I clicked on it and it was from one of my one of my fraternity brothers and he said hey Ken uh, so and so another one of our fraternity brothers had just got word that they got um, been diagnosed with prostate cancer. Would you, you know, would you pray for her today in worship? Now, I didn't. Uh, I don't really know this fraternity brother of mine. He he joined later after I'd already graduated, so I wasn't the one who got this diagnosis. I didn't know, but he's a part of one of our, our group chats, which my other fraternity brother is part of. And so I know him from that, okay, because he responds and things like that. All right. So he's a part of our group chat. So I have actually, you know, I had this number. And I said, yeah. So I texted back, yeah, yeah, I, I will. And so during, during the, the prayer time, I was, you know, I was remembering this fraternity brother Joel had sent me about. And I was praying. And I was praying, you know, felt this little nudge. You get him sometimes. You know, I should, I should call him. And you know, call this, again, this fraternity brother that I don't really know. Just call him and tell him I was praying for him. Because, you know, this is not good, good kind of news. But it's like, well, I'm not going to do it right now. I'm in worship. This is not what you do in worship, okay? But so after worship, then I, I went back and I found you know, the number and, and, I, and I called and I got just a voice in the mail. Got, went straight to the voicemail. And so I just said, hey, this is Ken Curtis, Kappa Epsilon, number 105. So they kind of, he know, <laughs> you know what he is, 160, something, I don't know. Anyway, hey, I, just, I heard you got some, some, pretty rough news just want to let you know we we're I was praying for you in, in worship this morning and that was it and that was the extent of the call later that day I got a, a, a text number I really you know just a, a number not a name attached to it and I ran and say like, oh thank you so much for my turn but thank you so much you don't know how much that means to me and I thought about that and how many times a day or how many times a week do we have a chance to be very simply well, to be one of those kinds of angels hmm. see here's the thing I'm going to be real clear I believe I believe there are heavenly creatures that God, that God has made messengers, angels, whatever you want to call them who do the work for God who 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 do visit us and remind us that God is with us sometimes miraculously sometimes we may not even uh, notice but I think they also model for us how we're meant to be and how we can be an earthly angel to someone else and so I want to encourage you to, during this Advent season especially, is to, uh, to listen for God's voice, to pay attention maybe to, to the nudges that God places on our hearts. Because who knows? We might just be an angel for someone who needs to be reminded that God sees them, that God is with them, that God hears them, 
and that God loves them. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for your love for us, that you see us, especially in our darkest moments, oh Lord, and that you long to send to us your messengers to come alongside, to remind you that you are there. Maybe they come and prepare a meal, maybe as they did for Elijah. Maybe they, they come to simply encourage us to get up and keep going. Maybe they remind us that you are with us, simply with us as you did with Hagar. But Lord, help us to pay attention and notice. To notice when you're calling us to be one of your messengers. To remind people the depth of your love. Your care and your concern. To offer hope, comfort, peace. Help us to pay attention, O oh Lord. When you sent those heavenly messengers to us or the earthly messengers. May we hear your voice for you indeed see us and hear us and walk with us. Friends, in Christ's name we pray these things. Amen.